Grand Seiko are the high end of Seiko watch offering. And for me, I'm a Grand Seiko fan. I have to admit this straight away. I own a Grand Seiko. The finishing of the movements is exemplary. Absolutely fantastic. I've also had the good fortune to have visited Japan. This piece is very, very interesting. It was launched this year. It's 55 years since Grand Seiko was founded. And this particular watch is the 62GS, and it actually references the original 62GS that was launched in 1967. The 62GS in 1967 was the first automatic wristwatch, and that's what this is, created by Seiko, I should add. Uh, so this is the first uh, automatic wristwatch created by Seiko in 1967, and the brand has basically created a recreation of it. Interestingly, the size has just increased marginally, but it's still quite small. It's about 37 to 38 millimeters in diameter. What you'll find is, is that this is because it, it would have been sympathetic to the period. If you actually look at watches today, they're obviously larger. But for a lot of traditionalists, they will actually appreciate the size of this watch. If you actually look at the, at the, the, the sapphire crystal, it's actually what we call a glass box sapphire crystal. It actually doesn't have a bezel on the watch, it actually sits proud and it affords light to flood onto the dial, enhancing the readability of the dial. The hour markers are batten type and they're beautifully faceted. They almost glisten in the light. In addition, you'll also see the hour and minute hands again are faceted. And one of the things about, about Grand Seiko watches is legibility is a key attribute to their products. So it's very, very clear, very, very simple to read. You'll also see the central sweep seconds hand, and you'll also see the day aperture at 3 o'clock. Interestingly, the crown is positioned at 4 o'clock, and this is for historical reasons, and that was because in 1967, when the watch was launched, they wanted to emphasise that it was self-winding watch, that you didn't need to be actually manually winding the watch every day. And that's why it was positioned at 4 o'clock. It's a nice little nostalgic touch. The other thing about this watch is the case. It's very, very complex in its construction. It's got lots of facets, lots of angles. And if you actually run your fingers over it, you'll immediately realise it's very, very, very smooth. And the reason for that is it's actually been subject to what's called Zeratsu polishing. And Zeratsu polishing, or blade polishing as it's sometimes called, is a skill that is, is particular to, to Japan. And it confers this beautiful, smooth, silky finish. It is incredible. I cannot think of many watches that surpass this in terms of smoothness. It's got a luxurious leather strap. The watch is presented in a luxurious leather strap and is complemented with a pin buckle. When we reverse the watch, we actually see that it has a solid case back. And there is part of me actually I feels a little bit sad about that because I actually know inside this watch has an incredibly beautiful movement. It's beautifully finished. However, the reason that it's got a solid case back is it's being sympathetic again to the original. And you'll actually see that it has the brand's lion symbol presented in relief, and it also has good anti-magnetic properties on this particular watch. The frequency of the movement is 4 Hz. It also has a power reserve of 72 hours. Uh, which is quite impressive, bearing in mind it has one single spring barrel. And the watch is, it's a purist watch, it is absolutely stunning. Um, I expect that this watch will be much sought after by collectors. It is, a, you know, the last one, the 44GS, which was launched a couple of years ago, very, very quickly uh, was snapped up by collectors. And obviously, this year it's 55 years of Grand Seiko, so it's a very important milestone in the history.